Welcome everyone, welcome to the message time. My name is Masashi from Life House Yokohama. Are you ready for an amazing time together? Well, in the month of October, we've been covering this talk of now and for eternity. Have you guys been enjoying this series? Let us know in the comments or ask somebody next to you, have you guys been enjoying this series? But I love just talking about eternity and just thinking about heaven together and just also being able to think about our time here on earth. And today what I want to talk about in the title today is this, what does Jesus value? What does Jesus value? Because, you know, he did so many different things and he valued a lot of different things. But what was the most important things that he valued? And I want to kind of unpack this together today. What was one of those things? But I want to encourage you and I want you to ask yourself, what do you value in your life right now? Because whatever you put your value to, those are the things that you put most time into. And whatever you put your value to, those are the things that you prioritize most. So, for example, if you prioritize and put value on health, of course, sometimes I'm reluctantly, but you would value your time in getting better fitness or going to the gym or eating better. And, you know, that's what you prioritize because you value getting healthier. So maybe you'll say no to some of the things, no to some snacks or some chocolates. You know, they're all good things. But what I want to say is whatever you value is what you put your focus into. So I want to ask you right now. What do you put your value into your life? What do you value the most? But I want to talk to you about today. Here it says in Matthew 13, 45 to 46. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of a great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it out. And I think that's the beauty of finding the true value. Whatever value that you find, that's where you put your whole life. You get sold out for it. And I think this is what Jesus valued. Whatever Jesus valued, he put his whole life in it because it was important to him and the Father in heaven. And today I want to unpack it from the, the Bible story. Do you guys love your Bible Bible is so powerful. It will change your life, full of the Word of God. But I want to encourage you, open up your heart and see what God will say to you today. Are you guys ready? So today I will read it from Luke 10, 38 to 42. And it's a story of two sisters, Martha and Mary. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples, disciples continued their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. And her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was planning, preparing. So she came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits there doing nothing while I'll do all the work preparing for this dinner. Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, because you can see right here that Jesus really loved Martha. So he wasn't rebuking her. He wasn't mad at Martha. But Jesus said, You are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Don't you love this story? That is so real life. But what Jesus said at the end just really caught my attention because, you know, we could be doing a lot of different things and we could get busy with a lot of different things. But Jesus says this, it says in the 40, verse 42, he says, there's one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary had discovered it. So point number one, what I want to say to you today is Jesus values time and relationship with you. Yeah, isn't this an amazing thing? Jesus values time and relationship with you. Because that's what it said in Luke, 30, Luke 10, 39. He, her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. So that's what Mary had discovered, that right? Jesus was in town. Jesus, in fact, came into their home. And he, maybe he was going on to the next city and doing on different things. But Mary discovered that the most important thing that she needed to put her value to 
was her time with Jesus. Now, of course, let's not say that whatever Martha was doing was not important. It was important because they all had to eat. But what I want to really focus on here is what Jesus wanted in that time, okay, in that space was he wanted a relationship with both of them. He wanted to teach them, both Martha and Mary. And Mary had discovered it. And I love it when Paul kind of unpacked it for us in Philippians 3, 8 to 11. Are you guys following along? Are you guys okay? Uh, why don't you tap somebody next to you and say, hey, wake up. Are you ready? But it says this in Philippians 3, 8 to 11. It says, yes, everything else is worthless, when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake, I have discarded everything else and continue counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. And becoming one with him, I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law, but rather I become righteous through faith in Christ. Uh, for God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. Isn't this amazing, really, realization and revelation that Paul had was everything else didn't matter. And the most important thing that, that, that he put value on was knowing Jesus. So I want to ask you a question. Do you know Jesus? And not just know his name, not just to know what he did for us. And I think there's two different kind of knowing do you have an intimate relationship with Jesus? Because that's what he truly values and that's what he truly desire with you is that relationship side of it. You know, because, you know, you could have so many followers on your Instagram and your X account and your Facebook or on YouTube subscribers. But do you really know all of them? And most of them not. You know, they might follow you. You might recognize their names. You know, you might just exchange Instagram information with somebody when you came across them. But in order to really, 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 really get to know them, what that person is like, what per that person likes to eat, what their habits are, what their personalities are and characteristics are, what do you need to do to get to really, really know them? You need to spend time with them. And I love, you know, spending time with my wife, Yuki. We've been married for six years. Yay. <laughs> marriage is amazing, everyone. Recommended. And God's plan for marriage is amazing. But <laughs> moving on. But, you know, I have known her for six years. And before that, we actually dated for about four years. So, you know, we were coming up to 10 years of knowing each other. But what surprises me most is more time I spend with her, uh, more things I find out about her. Oh, you like that food? Oh, well, now you like to work out with me now? So I know I'm, I'm just telling you, it's not just information and just as much time as you spend, that's more knowledge, more things that you find uh, about that person. So I want to encourage you, ask yourself again, do you know Jesus? And I mean, do you really, really know Jesus? And that's what I love, journaling, just reading the Bible for three minutes, five minutes, 30 minutes, however long. But journaling is just really spending time with Jesus, hearing his word and asking, what would you, what would you say to me, Jesus, today? And I plan that word. And I love simple prayer, too, that we get to converse. We get to talk to God and, and just really ask him, for the next step, asking for whatever you need. And I think those are the things that really uh, deepens our relationship with Jesus. And that's what he wants you to do. And that's what Mary had chosen in that moment where, you know, Martha was busy taking care of things. But what Jesus valued in that moment was that intimacy and relationship as he taught. So I want to encourage you. You know, it says in John 15, 5, Yes, I am the vine. You are the branches, and those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's again talking about relationships. We need relationship with Jesus in order to do anything, in order to bear fruits, in order to see what God has planned for us. Because God has an amazing plan for you, amazing purpose for you. But in order for us to see that happen, we need to get connected to God. Because apart from Him, we cannot do anything. So as you can see, God values so much on having relationship with you. So I want to encourage you. 
if you're kind of slacking on journaling or you know you tend to forget you know to pray that is okay but I want to encourage you, come back. Come back to the Word of God. Come back to pray. Enjoy this relationship with God and Jesus. And finding out many, many different amazing qualities and attributes of Jesus. Is that okay? And second thing I want to say is Jesus values grace and not works. Uh, so I want to encourage you sometimes, you know, living in a Japanese culture or Asian culture, sometimes we love to do things. We get busy with things. And, you know, I want to encourage you, like even Martha, when he was preparing for dinner, she wasn't doing anything bad, right? Um, but what it said here was Luke 10, 40 says, but Martha was actually distracted by the big dinner she was preparing so I want to ask you a question. Is there anything in your life that is distracting you? Whatever you're doing, whatever you're busy with, whatever you're tasked with, is that distracting with what Jesus values, which is relationship with you? Um, and you know, is there anything that is getting in the way of you just loving Jesus more? And it says she came up to Jesus and said, Hey, help me, Jesus. It's not fair. She was begging. She was making an excuse. But Jesus said, right, Martha, you're worried and upset all over all these details. Um, And, you know, the the kind of second subtitle I want to say on this point is, you know, we're living from grace and not for grace. Isn't that an amazing concept that, you know, Mary was doing this to please God and please other, uh, Martha was doing this to please God, please Jesus, please other people. She had to put this on, right? And it's not a bad thing. But we don't have to strive for it to please God. It's all about grace as we receive. It's not a performance-based love that He has for us. And I I had sometimes struggled with this concept because I used to play soccer. I used to be a soccer player. And in those environments, it's all about performance. If you want to get liked by the coach, if you want to start the next game, it's all about how well can you perform? Because otherwise you're not going to play. So sometimes I play that game with my relationship with Jesus. That, oh, I have to do more to be liked by God. I have to do more to get favored from God. I have to do, pick up so many different things and stay busy so that God pays attention to me. And that's a different ways of thinking. And it's not true. That's not what God values. It's not what Jesus is saying is important. In Romans 11, 6, this is what it says. And since it is through God's kindness that then it's not by their works, good works, in that case, God's grace would not be what it really is, free and undeserved. God doesn't love you because you're doing so many things. He loves you regardless. It's called unconditional grace. And that's why you cannot repay grace because it's so big. It's so overwhelming. All we can do is to be thankful. And from that place of thankfulness is when we serve God, serve other people with joy. And in this case, I think with Martha and Mary, I think it was just different priority that Jesus you know, really wanted to spend time with Martha. So I want to encourage you, sometimes some things <laughs> gets in the way of our quality time with Jesus. And you don't have to do something to spend that quality time. It's in that moment that you can spend quality time with God. And Ephesians 2, 8-9 says this, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So it's so great. You know, Martha was doing a great thing. But let's not forget that we're not doing it to earn more grace. We're not doing it to earn more love from God. It's been settled. We have been saved through our faith in Jesus and what he has done for us, right? So let's just get our hearts in the right place as we serve on the dream team. Anybody on the dream team here today? Can you guys wave? And if you see them, can we thank them all together? Let's clap our hands for serving amazingly in the dream teams. But I want to encourage you. Let's serve with the place of joy. Let's serve the Lord with gladness. Not because we have to, right? Not because somebody asked us to. We serve God because we've been saved by His grace and we are thankful. And we just want to say thank you to God using our gift. Is that okay? And I think it's so important as we think about eternity that we're not trying hard to get to heaven. We're not doing all this to 
uh, get to heaven. That's been settled already through Jesus. If you believe in Jesus through faith, you have been saved. And this is called grace. And that gets you into heaven, right? So that's just something we just get to say. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you for getting our place into heaven and eternity. And we get to enjoy that. And out of that abundance is when we get to serve people. We get to be on mission. We get to make a difference. And we get to tell our stories in heaven through that place of grace. And now for grace. Is that okay? Does that make sense? And last thing I want to say is Jesus values his people. Yay. And I love the scriptures in 1 Timothy 2, 3 to 6. Say, this is good and pleasant. Uh, this is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to, uh, to understand the truth. For there is one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity and the man Christ Jesus. He gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. This is the message God gave to the world at just the right time. So what does Jesus value? He values the people around us in our community. And that's why he wants to spend eternity with you, with me, with your family, with your friends, with everyone here on earth. Because he desires everyone to be saved, to understand the truth about eternity. You know, we're talking about grace and truth for our 2024 theme, right? Did you guys remember the theme for 2024? You know, 2024 is almost finishing. Are you? Guys, isn't that crazy? This 2024 flew by and it's almost Christmas time but the grace and truth the truth is god values you he wants to have a relationship with you you know he came for us you know he died on the cross for us for our mistakes but three days later he rose again and he's a living and alive god and he values you he values your friends and he wants to help and save all of us so that we can have an amazing party in heaven right isn't this amazing? And next, uh, next month, we're going to actually be talking about more about people and invitations in November, getting us ready for Christmas. But I thought it, just so, it was so important for us to understand all of this, understanding eternity and why is eternity important? What does Jesus value? Because he values you. That's why we're talking about all of this. And, you know, for me as well, I used to value different things. You know, before I knew Jesus, before I came to church about 12 years ago, I used to value my uh, maybe money. I used to value my fame and success as a soccer player, which failed. And my value went on to becoming a popular people uh, and to see how many friends I can have. Well, whatever, you know, value that I was looking for, it never really satisfied me. And I was moving on to next thing, next thing, next thing, and taking my, using my time, using my finance, using my priorities. But what I think I noticed was when I found out that Jesus really valued me and loved me, that's why he came from, he took his, you know, I think I, I, more and more I think about it, you know, money is important, of course, doing things is important, like Martha, you know, and, but what I thought about is time is so valuable. You know, I think about finance. You know, of course, it's good to have money. It's not good to have not, no money, right? <laughs> but money is something you can get back even if you become zero. You can find work and be creative. And you can get back to where you are. And other things as well. But I thought about time. And time is something you cannot get back. You only have now. And now only, <laughs> you know, and waiting. of course, eternity is waiting for us, but we cannot get back tomorrow, yesterday. We cannot get back a week ago. And I think about time and how Jesus used his time. He used his time for you, for us. He came for us, you know, he was born for us. Why did he use his time for us? Because he loved us. And when I received that, when I thought about it, when I received that, when I came to church, I said, I want that. I want that kind of relationship. If that is what Jesus values, you know, it's not about performance-based, you know. And I think if it was about relationship, I said to myself, I don't know everything, but I want to have relationships with this guy, with Jesus, to find out what he has for me, what kind of plans he has for me, what kind of love he has for me. And I can guarantee, I can tell you, I can promise you, my life was never the same. Do I understand everything right now? 
now. I'm getting to know him more and more as I spend time with him in journaling, in prayer, in church, in dream teams, in connect groups. And more and more I fall in love with Jesus because I get to discover how much he values me, how much he loves me. So I want to I pray for two groups of people. If you're here today thinking, oh, this is a great message for eternity, but now realizing how much Jesus values me gives you a motivation and a source to do something to serve God out of gratitude. Or maybe you've moved in more into law and legalistic and performance-based or uh, kind of like a transactional-based uh, thinking about God. And you want to say, you're saying, I want to come back to grace. I want to serve out of grace. I want to just live understanding grace. I want to pray for you. Can we close our eyes and just really pray together? Thank you, God, for everyone listening. And thank you for this truth, God, that you value us. That's what's most important uh, for you, God, because you love us. You came for us. You rose again for us. I just right now pray that anyone that was stuck in legalistic way, in works, God, I just pray for freedom, healing, and let them know how much you love them regardless because you have created them, Jesus. I just pray, help us to really move into grace, flow from grace, live under grace so that we can experience your amazing goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said... Amen, amen. And last group I want to pray for is maybe you don't know Jesus and you're saying, I want to receive Jesus today. Or you used to believe in God, but you're saying, I want to come back to God. Or if those are you, I want to pray for you. I want to count down from three. And when I say now, I want you to make that decision in your heart. Or if you're in, uh, watching this together, you can raise your hand where you are. But you know who you are and all you need to know is that truth <laughs> that Jesus values you. He loves you. He came for you and he died for you. But he rose again to forgive our mistakes, forgive us of our mistakes so that he can have a relationship with you. So that he can lead you and guide you into an amazing purpose, amazing future for, for you. And also so that we can spend eternity together with Jesus. So I'm going to count down from three. But if that is you, get ready to make that decision. Get ready to raise that hand. Are you ready? So if you want to receive Jesus for the first time today, or if you want to come back to God, three, two, one. Right now, why don't you make that decision, raising your hand and make that decision in your heart. Amazing. Well, can we pray together for those people? Thank you, Lord, for all these people making decisions, Lord. So I just pray you come into them. Get rid of everything they don't need, God. But I just pray you fill them with this truth that you love them with your grace, God, with this purpose and hope. And from this day forward, God, help them to live this amazing life that you prepared for them for eternity as well. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Praise God together. Well, that was an amazing series, everyone, but we'll see you for the next series. God bless you all.